to Arvon Home and to this edition which takes a look at the work that I've been doing on the ballasting, starts taking a look at uh, the engine shed and also something else that I've decided that I'm going to have a little build of a kit uh, whilst I'm waiting for the, all the bits for the engine shed and to finalise the design. So let's move straight on to the layout and take a closer look at all the ballasting work that I've been doing. Well, as you can see, the uh, ballasting, which has been the main thing, in fact, about the only thing that I've been working on since the last video, uh, and which has taken a lot more time than I expected, but I'm pleased with the, uh, with the result. Uh, I think this is probably showing up a lot lighter uh, with the, under the lights than um, is actually the case. But as I said I would do, I've taken the ballasting to just before the viaduct, uh, all the way along the main line uh, up to the tunnel. I've not yet done under the tunnel, but I will do. I'll take the, um, that top section off and just complete that bit of ballasting so that the ballasting goes in probably about five or six inches into the tunnel. Uh, as I said, with the ballast at this end is the, uh, just the, the plain grey ballast. And then the ballast that was used uh, starting at this track was a 50-50 mix of the light grey and the dark. The stuff that was used in the middle, which is actually only in, in the tracks here, is a ballast which is 60% of the dark and 30% of the light. And then I made up a mix of various scatters, which is this coloured stuff that you can see here, uh, which was some uh, asphalt, this is Javis scatters, asphalt uh, sand and then one which I think is meant to be stone chippings but is a is I'm trying to see if I've used it elsewhere and I don't think I have um, is a, a, so it has a ballasty color but I think it's meant to be stone chippings mix that in to give me a darkish sort of color to try and replicate the kind of muddy earthy color that you get in railway yards between the ballasted areas so the ballast probably is, extends only obviously here and then all of this big area here was put in with this mix and that's I think given me a, both a variation in colour uh, and also has meant that it's just not solid ballast all the way across which it wouldn't be. Um, so that's ballasting has been completed now I'm pleased to say. Um, lots of work making sure all the points worked. All the points do work. Trains have, been, have traversed them. Um, I mean, as you can see, both of those locomotives with sound on uh, came from where they were being stabled over at the weather top whilst I was doing the work and went across what is a quite complicated point section, including the double slip, uh, and did not lose sound at any point in the journey. So hooray, big hooray. Uh, I'm still having occasionally little bits of um, loose uh, ballast which getting in the way or little bits of dust uh, but a quick bit of clean and that seems to solve solve the problem. The area up here as I said I'm not going to do just yet I'm beginning to think about how that's going to be laid out. In particular I think there'll be more hard standing around the ash pit because lorries coming in to take the ash away need to be able to get right up to it uh, so I don't see any difficulty about putting some hard standing there. Uh, and I've still not made my mind up whether any hard standing is going to go into this shed or whether it's just going to be a shed, um, possibly with a pathway between the tracks, uh, just ballasted rather than, than put it in as, as hard standing. Uh, as I said, I think this has taken me the majority of my time over the last two weeks. Uh, there's a lot of area there to be covered. <laughs> You know, you sort of think, oh, I'll do a nip, nip this off. And actually it takes, and of course, you've got to allow it to dry uh, in between each application. Uh, but I'm glad to have got that bit out because there's not much left that needs ballasting. The area into, obviously, over the viaducts uh, and into what will be a tunnel. And then the area where the LMS train is just disappearing in the far behind the school uh, with that junction there. And that will complete the ballasting for this level. And then, of course, there will be some ballasting up at High Elven at some point. But I'm not rushing to do that just yet because 
I'm, I know I'm going to have to lift that off to wire in lights and goodness knows what else. And there's just no point putting ballast on, which may then all sort of tip off. Uh, so I'm pleased to have got that piece of work done. Uh, and that's given me the area now for the engine shed. Uh, and I'm grateful for all the comments, lots of people who gave me comments and thoughts about um, do I keep the sort of structure that it, that it currently is with one long shed and a short shed? Do I go for something that is uh, squarer or rather more rectangular? Uh, and really good arguments for both, which left me <laughs> just pretty much where I was before, before the comments. But it was really helpful because as a result, I have come to a conclusion that I think I do really like the idea uh, of having something here going on that's not under cover. Uh, and therefore, I am going to go for a single uh, front to the engine shed that will come about here. Uh, and it will be closed in at the back. Uh, and what I'm going to do now uh, into the next section is we'll go onto the desk uh, to have a look at my emerging thoughts about the design. I haven't designed it yet, there's no drawings, but I have got on order, which um, I don't think will be here uh, before I can get this video up, but I can show you some images of some of the materials that I think I'm going to be using um, for the build of the engine shed. So I'll just um, reposition everything and take you to the desk and we'll talk through the emerging thoughts on the design of the engine shed. On reflection it made far more sense to um, do this on the layout so that you can see where the engine shed is going to sit. Uh, what The piece of uh, paper that I've cut out there is the exact size that the exterior walls will come to for the engine shed and the two parallel lines that you can see are showing the centre of the roof line for each of the two roofs that will run over the, ro the roads that uh, have uh, tracks to them. The, um, I did think about having north light windows uh, here and indeed downloaded the Scale Scenes north light engine shed kit. Not to do that kit as such but it is a modular kit and I thought I might well be able to kit bash it um, until I went on to York Model Rail uh, website just to look at what they may have 
they've been improving the range of um, building de detail uh, and construction items in their range. And I'll put up here a picture of the roof truss that I'm intending to use for the two roofs, which means that they, they are going to be a normal uh, pitched roof, just the same as the existing ones have. I rather like this design, uh, particularly with the little raised section, which will give the opportunity to, to put some vents in. Uh, that hasn't arrived yet. I only ordered it at the beginning of this week, and I know they're very busy. Not surprising with us all in lockdown. Uh, the other thing that I've ordered um, is some uh, tr uh, trusses, uh, girders rather, not trusses. Uh, and I'm just be interested to see when I get them uh, how I can build them into the model, because I rather like the design of them, as you can see here. Uh, so I'll be interested once they arrive and you'll be able to see in the next one because once they've arrived I think I can get down to some serious um, design of what the shed is going to look like. But as, as you can see from here there's going to be two long roofs coming along here which will have a vent on the top because of the shape of the roof truss. In this area the two roofs, the roof truss uh, stretches from the exterior wall to a line which you may not be able to see which just sits here and then the second truss sits there so the two pitched roofs won't quite touch which is good and what I have in mind is that this area here down the centre is going to be open to the elements but will be a, a kind of work area uh, and I want to have a look around see if I can find some engage workbenches and that sort of thing to be able to put in the centre. Um, if I could, what I would ideally like to be able to do is to put a crane inside on one side, probably this side. Um, I, whether I will have smoke vents, as you would have, for example, in a roundhouse that was just being used to store the engines, as opposed to a workshop, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I may do. I'll see. I, the York Model Rail do some excellent uh, smoke vents in double O gauge uh, or scale but they don't yet do them in N but I'm not sure whether I want those really because this is not intended to be a place where locomotives are readied this is just really a storage place and a workplace which is why you've got the inspection pits inside um, so I just need to get in my head exactly what this is being used for and that will help me uh, with the design um, so I'm looking forward to getting those. I have been able to source from PD models up in Orkney uh, these which are the windows uh, for the shed and these are going to be the skylights of the shed which is rather good. These are very very close in size uh, I think to the uh, Metcalf models. I will when I cut one of these off actually measure it up to see if you could use them instead in the Metcalf models. They're very close I think. Uh, which would add something to the Metcalf kits because the only problem with Metcalf and their windows uh, is that they're a bit flat uh, and the beauty of having the etched brass window frames uh, is that it does give you some depth. Uh, so I'm looking forward to those so that the, the basic design is going to be that there will be um, three skylights either side of the window and then those big windows marching down the side. I haven't yet worked out how many windows down the side, but I should think there'll be somewhere like a six or eight. Don't think more than that, because it's got to be quite a firm structure to take the weight of the, uh, the walls, and you don't want too many windows, I don't think. Uh, built around a frame, so uh, that, that will be quite interesting. The back here is going to be a, a solid wall, and possibly putting an office in around this area somewhere um, for the foreman. Uh, so we'll see where that goes to. But those are the ideas that are coming to my head at the moment. Can I just say thank you to everybody uh, once again for all the ideas and all the comments about what the shed might be, how it might work. Um, it really was very helpful. I know I said earlier that you know it left me exactly where I was, but it, it helped me just think through all the elements that I wanted uh, and once I'd fixed that actually I do want this to be an area of interest 
this then started to form in my mind. And as you may know, for me, designing a, a scratch build, I have to be able to see it. Once I can see it, I can design it, if that makes sense. Uh, and I'm all, uh, as every day goes by, I can actually see the inside of this shed now. Uh, so thank you once again for all your, all your comments. Um, what I'm going to do now, I am going to go down to the desk now, uh, because I've got something which I'm going to be working on uh, until I can actually start doing this scratch build, um, because this is still at the design stage, and I can't be having not building something. So we'll go down to the desk and I'll show you that before we come up here just to finish. Some time ago when I was talking about the design of High Elven, uh, a number of comments came back which mentioned whether there would be a church up at uh, High Elven. Uh, and I thought, well, there should be a church up at High Elven, but I didn't want anything as big as St Eldar. Um, and I'd seen a long while ago seven models who largely do, I think exclusively, do brass etch kits, uh, did, did a kit of a uh, church, a small chapel. Uh, so I bought it a little while ago. Uh, and as I, while I'm still faffing around working out what the um, engine shed will look like, uh, I've got to have something to be modelling and building. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd actually start work on this, which I, I bought this about oh, about a month or so ago. Um, I was very impressed with the way it came. It came on a really thick piece of card to make sure it wasn't bent, uh, and the packaging generally. Um, as you can see, it's not a very complex model when I get the pieces out. It's all on one frame uh, and will uh, essentially give, provide me with... Uh, this obviously is the main building. There's a cross piece that, that fits on there and then the roof goes on the top. Um, I, there's, there's quite a nice lot of detail on here so I shall enjoy uh, trying to paint this and get this to come out as I, as I want it to do. It's a brick detail but I think I will probably go along the lines used for the signal box up at High Elven, uh, that grey colour, uh, and we'll see how we go. Uh, seven models pretty much recommend that you use super glue to fix the model together uh, rather than um, uh, soldering. So I will give that a go, um, making sure I have a decent super glue. But you can see that the you know, there's not many instructions to this thing. So I'm seriously hoping uh, that it will go together tolerably well and then I can get on and paint it. And that by the time uh, we come back together, uh, this will indeed have been painted. I'm very impressed with the models that seven models have. I, I don't need many more of them, unfortunately. Uh, but if you've not uh, come across this company before, it'd be well worth going and having a look. But I'll show you how I get on with trying to build this. In the tool time tips, which I did last year, I think I showed you a tool that I bought from PD Models, which is designed specifically for um, folding brass kits. Um, it's not immediately to hand. I perhaps should have thought about that before. But I'll put up an image here of the, of the tool, which will help me to get nice crisp folds as I bend all the uh, parts of the kit once it's taken off of the frame. Um, so hopefully with all of that together and a decent uh, glue, which I've got, um, we should be able to put this together and then start weathering it. And hopefully by the time you come back in a couple of weeks time, um, this will all have been built, but we shall see. So that's, uh, that's just my little thing to keep me amused while I'm trying to work out how the engine sh shed needs to be designed. Uh, and let's just go back onto the layout now to bring this episode of Elven Home to a close. Well, that just about finishes that, this edition of Elven Home. Uh, as you can see, another view of the work of the ballasted area, which really does make a difference to the look of this side of the layout. Uh, and I'll have to get all the other locomotives that can now be taken down from where they've been stored safely out of the way and put down into, the, uh, into this area uh, and uh, get on with building... Uh, the church uh, for the area up at High Elven. Uh, as ever, if you have any comments, please do let me have your comments. Uh, if you've liked the video, then please do give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, well, please do subscribe 
and hit the bell notification to know when I'm uh, uploading videos. But until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.